This presentation is for Monsoon Awareness Week in 2016. For this day, we will focus on heat stress across Southern California and the desert southwest. Monsoon Awareness Week has several components. Here we will focus on heat stress, in particular health issues related to excessive heat, sunburn, heat cramps, heat exhaustion, and heat stroke. Extreme heat, it really is a silent killer. Even in Southern California and the desert southwest, and even in places where we're used to extreme hot temperatures. If we're not acclimated or prepared for this type of heat, there can be problems. And in some cases, it can be serious or even deadly. Temperatures across our region can vary several degrees just in a few miles. Extreme heat can occur anywhere. It's not inclusive to just the deserts. It can occur on the coast and even in the mountains. At the National Weather Service, we record temperatures with thermometers, different types of thermometers. All of them can have slightly different readings, but the bottom line is extreme heat is something that is serious and needs to take special precautions to avoid the impacts. In fact, extreme heat and heat-related illnesses are the number one leading cause of weather-related fatalities when you look at a 30-year average, as shown here. Extreme heat can be more than flooding, lightning, tornadoes, and hurricanes, the common weather fatalities that we most are associated with and see on the news. Did you know that extreme heat and its impacts can be a billion dollar disaster? In 2012, the heat and drought and the related impacts, including wildfires, were all billion dollar disasters. Extreme heat seems to be getting a little bit more common. On this graph here, you can see that global temperatures are warming. In fact, 2016, is the warmest on record. The past two years in California alone are the hottest on record. As shown here, 2014 and 15 set records across the state as the warmest temperatures for any given year. Records go back to the late 1800s. You can learn more about extreme heat and how to take precautions to avoid being a statistic or avoid the morbidity and mortality impacts of heat. Learn more at climate.gov. Now many agencies are promoting education and awareness in addition to the National Weather Service. If you'd like to learn more about the climate of 2050, you can check out information at San Diego 2050. How can you plan for heat? You can check the daily forecast from the National Weather Service, the point and click forecast, some of us call it, and that'll tell you what the current temperatures are and also give you a forecast of what the expectations are for the rest of the day and the rest of the week. So you can plan accordingly. The National Weather Service sends out notification of extreme heat events, especially when it's exceeding thresholds or causing regional or widespread impact. Our map here, the watch warning advisory map, will turn purple or orange or bright shades of colors when excessive heat is expected in those regions. The National Weather Service also produces an experimental heat risk and level of impact that is associated with heat stress. On this map here, the areas in the brighter colors, the reds, purples, and oranges, are areas identified as being an unusual risk. So this means that temperatures forecast in these regions on this particular day are expected to be much above normal. Temperatures may exceed record levels, and temperatures are at levels that will impact people of different types more so in the red and the purple shaded areas. Check the scale on the left hand side. 
to see how it matches in your particular region. Keep in mind, forecast temperatures change every day, so so will this associated map change as well. Local awareness of heat events. Here's an example of when hot temperatures are expected. Your local agencies may push out information warning you of the heat, but also telling you what you can do and where you can go, such as cooling centers, libraries, and other locations to beat the heat. You also may receive push notification. You can sign up to get notification directly from FEMA, who sends National Weather Service alerts, or your local county or city may allow you to receive push notification as shown here. Heat safety. You need to prepare for the heat, basically by drinking plenty of water, applying sunscreen before you go out, and you must know the symptoms of heat. Sometimes it's very subtle and not obvious, especially on the elderly and the kids. Weather.gov slash heat gives you more details. Heat safety during a heat wave, slow down, reschedule, avoid those peak hours of extreme temperatures. Children and the elderly should be checked on regularly. They need a cool place. Always remember, check the back seat, beat the heat. Staying safe, here are some tips for you. Of course, avoid prescription drugs, avoid excessive activity in the outdoors. Always check on the elderly and the pets, stay hydrated, change your appointments, plan and to avoid the hottest time of the day. If you feel dizzy or faint, you are likely succumbing to the impacts of extreme heat. Additional impacts from heat can be the humidity. The dry heat can be a severe impact, and so can when you add humidity to it. It can make it more uncomfortable, harder for your body to cool down. It can make the nighttime temperatures warmer. It feels muggy, and it can also be an additional stress on your body. Air quality during heat waves can also be an impact. You can check out your local air quality index or airqualityweather.gov. If you have an air conditioner, make sure you change your filters so that you're keeping the air clean as possible in your house. If it's hot outside, what can you do? Well, you need to stay cool, drink plenty of fluid, stay hydrated, stay informed. Know when the temperatures are expected to be at their hottest point. Stay updated on local weather forecasts so you can plan accordingly. When you work outside or you must be outside, schedule the task earlier or later in the day. Go jogging in the evening or early morning. Take frequent breaks if you must be outdoors. You have to drink lots of water. If you're getting dehydrated, it's almost too late by then. Don't wait until you're thirsty. Avoid alcohol and other liquids containing large amounts of sugar. And wear light-colored loose clothing. Are you at most risk for heat today? Well, some groups of people are at greater risk. Know if you're in this group. And if you are in this group, see if you can find neighbors or friends or relatives that can keep an eye on you or give you advice of what to do when temperatures are so extreme. Now there's been studies done by the University of California, San Diego. It's not always about the deserts. It's not always about where there's extreme heat in the Central Valley. Those of us that are not acclimated, perhaps it's May and we're experiencing extreme temperatures, or perhaps we're on the coast and we're used to temperatures in the 70s during the summer. Those regions have shown to have high impact when they do get heat waves, as shown here. It depends the time of the year, too. If you live along the coast, you may experience your warmest temperatures in the fall, perhaps September, October. If you live in the deserts or the valleys and mountains, you may experience your warmest temperatures earlier in the summer, perhaps June and July. Know your region, or if you're going to a different area, know that it could be different when the hottest temperatures are typically expected. But heat can occur any time of the year. Okay, finally, here's the outlook for the upcoming summer period, June through August. This temperature outlook is produced by the National Weather Service and the Climate Prediction Center of NOAA. 
The expectations are for above normal temperatures for most of the west, as shown here in the orange shading and the dark orange shading. This means more heat waves for our region of the desert southwest. Plan accordingly with this upcoming summer weather. Thanks for tuning into this video on heat and our health.